Boy buys diapers daily until Officer trails him. It was like any other day for Officer Darius Jones. He'd seen it all throughout his career at the Oakland Police Department, but nothing prepared for what he was about to find out. He had seen this young boy walk around the neighborhood every day, but then one day he decided to follow him. He would not regret his decision. A young boy who barely looked old enough to be walking on his own had been in Officer Jones' spotlight for the past week of being on patrol duty in the Oakland, California area. Each day, he would see the boy walking the same route with a backpack and then enter a convenience store. He would emerge with nothing but his backpack, but what was he buying every day? Officer Jones was very observant when it came to certain cases, especially when it involved children, so when he noticed something unusual in his daily routine, he kicked into high gear to investigate. Something about this boy had intrigued him and he needed to know more about him, but what intrigued him so much about the young boy? The boy's determination and consistency puzzled Officer Jones. He couldn't fathom why a child would embark on the same path every day without fail. His curiosity gnawed at him, driving him to unravel the mystery behind the boy's actions. There had to be a reason why he deviated from the school route and ventured into the convenience store. As the days passed, Officer Jones meticulously observed the boy's movements. He positioned himself discreetly, blending into the surroundings while his eyes remained fixated on the store's entrance. And then, finally, the moment of truth arrived. What would Officer Jones uncover about the little boy? Why was he frequenting the convenience store on a daily basis? On that fateful day, Officer Jones witnessed the boy walking through the convenience store's doors. Anticipation surged through his veins as he observed the boy's actions. He perused the store aisles, his innocent eyes scanning the shelves. Officer Jones realized that the boy's gaze was fixated on a particular section, the baby care aisle. But why was a young boy there in the first place? To Officer Jones' astonishment, the boy reached for a package of diapers and carefully placed them into his basket. His heart sank with a mix of concern and curiosity. Why would a child purchase diapers on a daily basis? Who was he buying them for? Was there something more sinister at play? Officer Jones needed to find out. That's when he quickly asked the cashier who'd helped the boy. Excuse me, ma'am, that boy who just bought the diapers, have you seen him here before? The cashier chewed her gum loudly before answering, Oh yeah, him. He comes by every day and buys the same thing. Don't know what's going on at home, but it can't be good. I asked him if he was okay, but he just shrugged and looked scared. Officer Jones hesitated for a moment, torn between intervening immediately and conducting further investigation. He decided to trust his instincts and follow the boy discreetly. His duty as a police officer and his compassion for the child demanded answers. The boy looked worried and afraid, and Officer Jones didn't like that he was walking alone every day. As the boy left the convenience store, Officer Jones maintained a safe distance, trailing behind him. The neighborhood unfolded before them, familiar streets, modest houses, and a sense of community. Officer Jones couldn't help but wonder how the seemingly routine purchase of diapers could be intertwined with such secrecy. The boy didn't seem to be in any trouble, but there could be something more troubling that he was facing. After a short walk, the boy arrived at a dilapidated house nestled on the outskirts of the neighborhood. Officer Jones watched from a distance as the boy entered, looking around if there was anybody watching, and he held a package of diapers tightly against his small frame. His heart clenched, knowing that he had stumbled upon something significant. Officer Jones took a deep breath and approached the house cautiously. He knocked on the door, his senses heightened, preparing for any eventuality. Moments later, a tired woman in her late thirties opened the door, her eyes reflecting a mix of surprise and weariness. Was this the boy's mother? Why was she sending him to go to the store every day? Ma'am, my name is Officer Darius Jones, he began, his voice gentle yet authoritative. I've been observing a young boy who comes to this house daily purchasing diapers. I'm concerned for his well-being and would like to understand the situation. The woman's face paled and her eyes darted nervously. Officer Jones sensed her unease, but he remained steadfast, waiting for her response. Can I come in? I've spoken to the cashier of the convenience store he's been going to every day, and they too are very worried about his well-being. Is everything okay, ma'am? After a moment of hesitation, she invited him inside, leading him to a sparsely furnished living room. Sorry about the mess, I just can't do much at the moment, the woman eventually said. What had Officer Jones walked into? With a heavy sigh, the woman began to speak, her voice trembling with a mix of vulnerability and despair. She revealed her name to be Emily and shared the heart-wrenching story of her life, a single mother battling against insurmountable odds. As a police officer, Officer Jones was no stranger to these heartbreaking stories. In the end, it's always the children who suffer the most, he thought, but he had no clue that something dark and sinister was at play here, something he'd never encountered in his career before. Officer Jones learned that Emily had lost her job several months ago, struggling to make ends meet and provide for her family. She was also suffering from postnatal depression and every day was a struggle for her. Her eight-year-old son Daniel had become a pillar of strength, 
stepping in and helping where he could around the house, even cooking light meals for them. But there were crucial parts of this story that Emily was conveniently leaving out while talking to the officer. Officer Jones sat back in his chair, unable to believe the story he was listening to. This woman had gone through so much and was barely hanging on. Her poor son was carrying a heavy burden on his shoulder at such a young age. With a smile on his face, Daniel offered Officer Jones a cup of coffee, but the officer should have known that there was more to this than met the eye. Thanks, buddy, but you didn't have to make this, Officer Jones replied. Daniel looked very tired but so sincere he couldn't refuse the boy's kind gesture. I see you walking to the shop every day. I wanted to know if you're okay, pal. Daniel had a look of fear on his face. Was there something that he was hiding? You can tell me anything, Daniel. Don't be afraid. You're safe now. Daniel began fidgeting and couldn't sit still. Officer Jones knew he was onto something. Daniel had clammed up and that was a sign that something was wrong. And then all of a sudden he spoke. I have to help mommy. I don't like it, but I have to or else. Or else what? He's just tired and nervous. His mom cut in with a wary smile. Is there anything else we can help you, officer? She asked. It was clear that she was hiding something. Officer Jones could see it in her eyes. He could see the same fear that had petrified her son swim through her eyes. Standing up and putting on his cap, Officer Jones said goodbye. But this wouldn't be the last time this family would see him. The officer exited the house with his mind racing. What he'd managed to uncover here was the tip of something big, and he'd work until he found out what. With one last look at the dilapidated house, he walked to his cruiser, sitting in before driving off. But just as he was turning the engine on, something happened that had his brows furrowing. One of the living room window curtains slid to the side as a pair of small eyes settled on him. Daniel, Officer Jones whispered. The boy's eyes were glued to the cruiser with tears lining his cheeks. The officer faced the car, feeling like someone else was watching him. There was a reason both Daniel and his mom were so fearful. Someone else was calling the shots here. It fell to Officer Jones to uncover whom. The officer fought back the urge to wave goodbye and drove off, but he was just around the corner before he phoned the incident in. He asked dispatch to have someone look at data surrounding the street he was in. He was interested in anything that would raise eyebrows from gang activity to break-ins, but what he'd end up uncovering would be much more than he bargained for. Officer Jones had always been a caring cop. He'd never let a case beat him in the years he'd worn the badge. Although he never got attached emotionally, he always worked hard to ensure he broke through, bringing justice to those who deserved it. But he'd soon learned that this case was unlike anything he'd ever encountered. But for now, he'd have to keep an eye on the house, little Daniel and his mom. If only the officer knew that someone was already watching him. Officer Jones drove back to the station, finding one of his colleagues with a desk full of files surrounding the street and house he just visited. The files contained several cases, each darker than the next. Officer Jones ate back a hurl as he poured through the information. He'd never seen such carnage centered in one part of the city, but this would only be the start. The woman's house had been in and out of the market for years. It had seen all the bad a home could see, killings, drug deals, hostages, and shootouts. The place had grown to be feared in the neighborhood with many insisting it was cursed. Each family that moved in got saddled with one disaster or another. Surely this place had to have some evil entwined with it, or was there a more logical reason for this chaos? As an expert in criminology, Officer Jones knew there was a logical explanation for what was happening here. He pulled up maps of the streets, realizing the house was strategically placed in the neighborhood. It was well hidden from the only road that fed into its street and was big enough for the people inside to see down the streets if someone was coming. Additionally, it was built with stone, unlike many houses in the area, making it a mini fortress. But this didn't explain what the officer had witnessed at the home. His mind traveled back to the events of the day. He noted how the woman and Daniel had first seemed calm and happy to see him, but everything had suddenly changed. It was as if they'd internalized the fact that Officer Jones was a man of the law. Were they involved with something illegal that they'd act this way? Judging from everything Officer Jones had uncovered here, he was sure the house was a base for criminal activity. Given its history and geographical advantage, it would make sense why a gang or criminal organization would make it an outpost of some kind. This thought made the officer sigh. He wiped the sweat off his eyebrows, hating the possibility that someone had knowingly entangled a mom and her kids into this mess. He'd have to put an end to it soon. Getting up from his seat, the officer headed home. He still needed to go over more information regarding the house and the prevalent gangs in town. Perhaps he could find something to point him in the right direction. With the files in hand, he drove home, taking a quick shower and eating with his family before spending the night going through the files. The following day, the officer drove back to Target, eager to see if Daniel would show up again. He wanted to buy him some food for the boy and his mom, a gesture of goodwill. He also hoped this would make Daniel trust him more. The little boy had seemed apprehensive the previous day. He would wanted to say something, but his mom cut him off. Officer Jones wondered if Daniel's mom had been manipulated into the position she was in or if she just found herself in a tight spot. He'd seen cases where moms gave up everything, including their freedom to provide for their kids, but he'd also seen instances where moms didn't care about their children's welfare and constantly put their lives in danger. Which of the two categories would Daniel's mom fall in? 
Officer Jones didn't know. Parking his car a few blocks from Target, he spent his morning waiting for Daniel to show up, but the boy didn't make an appearance. The officer drove to the store and hurried to the cashier, asking if Daniel had come in for his daily supply of diapers. The answer he'd get would send fear and panic rushing through his veins. He didn't show up today, the cashier said, worry lacing her words, but a large man came in at the exact time he usually shows up. He bought the same brand of diapers and left in the same direction the boy usually takes. Officer Jones didn't wait for the cashier to give a clear enough description of the man. He thanked them and hurried to the car, knowing he needed to reach the woman's house as fast as possible. The officer pulled into the woman's driveway, his heart pounding. He walked up the stairs, announcing himself before getting in. He found Daniel and his mom standing in the middle of the living room as if they'd been expecting him. Daniel, the officer called. Are you okay? He turned to Emily. Are you guys okay? But before Daniel could speak, the front door swung open and a man barged into the room. Emily's eyes widened with fear and Officer Jones instinctively stood up, placing himself between the man and the boy. The man's eyes darted around the room and his face contorted with anger as he saw Officer Jones there. Who the hell are you, he snarled. I'm Officer Darius Jones with the Oakland Police Department, he replied calmly, trying to maintain control of the situation. I've been talking to Emily and Daniel here, trying to understand their situation. The man's gaze shifted to Daniel and a malicious grin crept across his face. So you've been sticking your nose where it doesn't belong, huh, he sneered. Well, let me tell you something, officer, this is none of your business. Officer Jones could sense the danger in the room and his training kicked in. He tried reaching for his radio to call for backup, but the guy had his eyes on him. He tried to de-escalate the situation. Sir, I'm concerned about Daniel and Emily's well-being and I believe they need support. I'm just trying to help. Who might you be? Family? He asked firmly. The man took a step closer and Emily clung tightly to Daniel, fear evident in her eyes. We don't need your help. I'm a close friend of Emily's. We have everything under control here, he growled. But before the situation could escalate further, a voice came from the doorway. Is everything all right in here? It was Officer Hernandez, Officer Jones' partner who had quietly entered the house having followed him from a distance. Officer Jones felt a wave of relief knowing he had backup. We're just talking, he said calmly keeping his eyes on the man, no need for any trouble. But Officer Jones knew something wasn't right in this house. Officer Hernandez assessed the situation and his presence seemed to make the man think twice about his actions. Why don't we all take a step back and talk about what's going on here, he suggested, trying to defuse the tension. As the officers and the man engaged in a tense conversation, Daniel clung to his mother, his young heart pounding with fear and uncertainty. Officer Jones knew that this man was no friend of Emily's. He needed to somehow talk to the mother and son in private, but by the looks of things, this man wasn't going anywhere. It was like he had some kind of hold over him. Officer Jones could see that Daniel didn't want any harm to come to his mother. He had a look of both fear and anger when he looked at this man. Who was he and why did he come barging into their house? After talking to the mysterious man, officers Jones and Hernandez had no choice but to leave. Officer Jones felt bad for leaving them with that man and he still had so many questions to ask them. Like what did Daniel mean when he said he had to help his mother or else? Was he referring to this man? The next day, Officer Jones made his way back to Emily and Daniel's house. He'd had a sleepless night and needed them to answer all his questions. He knocked on the door, but no one answered. He knocked again and called out, Emily. Daniel, it's Officer Jones. Please open up. I need to talk to both of you. He then heard how the key in the door turned and the door slowly creeped open. Emily peered halfway through, tears rolling down her cheek. Why did you come back? She asked. I want to help you and Daniel, but I need you to tell me who that horrible man is. Emily quickly opened the door and Officer Jones stepped inside. It was then that he saw her face. What happened? Did that guy hit you? Emily walked to the living room to sit down. Daniel was holding the baby in his arms. Please tell me what happened so I can help. Emily burst into tears. Officer Jones knew that he was on to something. That man was bad news. He needed to stop him. He's a local gang boss and he asks us for protection money. If I don't have it, he beats me up. Yesterday, he beat me because you guys were here and he wanted to know if I said something to you. I just can't live like this anymore. Officer Jones' heart sank. He felt so sorry for Emily and her family. But before he could help them with that, he needed to help them get out of the dire situation they were in. Officer Jones knew they needed a delicate approach. He wanted to protect Daniel and Emily from further harm, but he also understood the complexities of the situation. Poverty, mental health struggles, and domestic violence were all tangled together, and solving one issue wouldn't necessarily fix everything. Emily needed to see a therapist to help her through her depression. He knew that he would possibly also need to get social services involved, but he didn't want Emily to lose her children because she didn't have a job and was trying her best to provide for them. Officer Jones knew that she was trying her utmost best given the terrible circumstances they were facing and he wanted to help Daniel get back to school. He'd seen families fall on hard times before and he saw them get out of it. He was going to make sure that Emily and her children would come out of this hell they were in. He was particularly worried about Daniel. He didn't have any positive role models in his life. 
Officer Jones vowed to change that even if he had to step in and be that role model for him. He looked at Daniel. He wanted to talk to him in private again. He knew this boy was carrying a heavy load and all he needed to do was talk to him. Hey pal, remember when he said that you had to help your mom with a baby or else? What did you mean by that? Were you referring to that bad man? What was going on? Was Daniel being abused? It was then that Emily spoke up and clarified what Daniel meant. My youngest child Lily suffers from a medical condition that requires a constant supply of diapers. What Danny means is that if he doesn't go to get the diapers, there'll be a huge mess to clean up. Unable to afford a stockpile, Emily had resorted to purchasing a small package daily, ensuring her daughter's basic needs were met. Officer Jones listened attentively, his empathy growing with every word Emily spoke. He realized the depth of her sacrifice and the profound love she held for her children. This was a story of resilience, of a mother's unwavering determination to protect and care for her family. But why is Daniel not in school like any regular kid his age? I can't afford to send him to school now. The books and transport fees are so expensive, we have to keep that money for food. Danny understands even though he misses his friends so much. Officer Jones knew that he needed to help Daniel and his mother. He needed to go to school and she desperately needed a job. How was he going to achieve all this? Moved by Emily's story, Officer Jones understood the significance of his role as a police officer. He recognized that his duty extended beyond enforcing the law. It encompassed safeguarding the community, offering support and finding solutions to the challenges faced by its members. Determined to help Emily and her family, Officer Jones began to explore avenues for assistance. He contacted local charities, social services, and community organizations, seeking resources and support that could alleviate their financial burden. Word of Emily's plight spread throughout the neighborhood, sparking a remarkable display of unity and compassion. Neighbors banded together, organizing fundraisers, collecting donations, and providing emotional support to Emily and her children. It was a testament to the resilience and interconnectedness of the community. Meanwhile, Officer Jones continued his investigations to ensure the family's safety. He uncovered the network of individuals preying on vulnerable families, exploiting their desperation for personal gain. Determined to bring these criminals to justice, he collaborated with his colleagues, piecing together evidence and building a case. He wanted them out of the communities to stop them from exploiting vulnerable families. As the investigation unfolded, the community's determination to protect its members grew stronger. Residents became more vigilant, reporting suspicious activities and offering their cooperation to law enforcement. It was a powerful demonstration of resilience against those who sought to exploit the vulnerable. They thanked Officer Jones for standing up for their community. They had suffered long enough. Months passed and the day of reckoning finally arrived. Officer Jones and his fellow officers apprehended the individuals responsible for preying on families like Emily's. The community rejoiced, finding solace in knowing that justice would be served and their neighborhood would be safer. Officer Jones was proud that he could rid the community of the criminal elements. With the threat eliminated, Emily and her family could finally breathe a sigh of relief. The weight of constant worry lifted from their shoulders, replaced by a newfound sense of hope. The community's support had not only provided them with the means to meet their basic needs, but also renewed their faith in humanity. They could all sleep better at night knowing that they were a little bit safer. Emily was able to go to therapy for her depression, but their journey was far from over. Buoyed by the support and resources provided by their community, they began to rebuild their lives. Emily found employment and Lily's medical needs were adequately addressed. The scars of their past struggles slowly faded, replaced by a future filled with possibilities. Daniel returned to school and was doing well. With the job that Emily had, she was able to pay for his school books and transportation. He was much happier since returning to normal. From that day forward, Officer Jones carried the lessons he learned within his heart. He approached his duties not only as a protector of the law, but also as a catalyst for positive change. He always checked in on Emily and her children to make sure that they were still doing well. His commitment to his community grew stronger, and he became a beacon of hope for those in need.